You have to understand what money is so that you can appreciate the good that Bitcoin does. We are living through two major revolutions. The first is like the, the internet revolution, where everything is digitalizing, everything is on a global scale all of a sudden. And then on the second side, we have the Bitcoin revolution, the sound money revolution, where we all of a sudden have better money. How high is the inflation there? It's getting very expensive. Uh, we have today two really interesting topics. We have the first topic of Bitcoin racing, uh, like Bitcoin, and the second topic of racing, which is uh, really fascinating. Uh, and you are doing, uh, you are with the team of Bitcoin racing. Um, for the people that don't know about it, maybe let's start off with like, what is it? And then a little bit of the story. How did this uh, Bitcoin racing thing come about and how did this all start? Sure. Yeah. So we've always been racing as a family. Uh, I started racing in cars in 2016, did a year of that, and then took a break. And we got back into it in 2021 through to 2022. Um, but we found Bitcoin as a family in 2020. Uh, my brother actually came across it. Um, and we thought, why not turn our team into a bit into, onto the Bitcoin standard? And we thought we'd just call it Bitcoin Racing to spread the message. Uh, and we've gone from there, really. Oh, nice. So it is a, it's a family uh, yeah. it's a family thing and and uh and and how did you come up to the to the bitcoin standard how was this um evolving uh, you probably you discovered did you discover bitcoin or was it someone of your family it was my brother charlie yeah he he sort of runs the team mm. pretty much um yeah he found it in oh. he was um looking for ways to help us as a family and thought bitcoin would be mm. the best way and uh, it's gone very well so far Nice. And, and you are now the, the race of, of Bitcoin racing, right? Yeah, I'm the driver. Ah, nice. We did have so, um, three other drivers last year racing in the City Car Cup, which was fun. Um, but they've taken a year off now, but hopefully they'll come back next year. And um, we've got space for more drivers next year if anyone sees this and wants to start racing. Nice. And how did you personally start with with, with uh, racing? How, how, how this all like... So it's it's it seems like everyone's young boy's dream, but uh, I yeah. I don't know anyone that actually did this in in real life. <laughs> so yeah, so my my dad started racing when he was about eighteen. He did um, grass track racing and then moved to track racing. He did pretty well in that. And then um, when me and my brother, my brother was ten, I think, and I was about eight years old. He got us both a go kart, and we fell in mm. love with it straight away. And you haven't really stopped since. So it's in the blood. Oh, nice. It's, it's that, that that's really cool that it's in, in the in the blood and that uh, uh, that you are doing doing that. Um, and you have uh, something up coming up in this year. It's called the mini challenge, or like yeah. our, our J JCV uh, mini challenge. Yes, the JCW mini challenge. I'm racing in the sports series, which races all over the UK, and it's on TV. Ah. Okay, and how? how um, as I have no clue about racing and I have no clue about uh, this this whole thing, how how big is that and, and and how does this all divide up? Because I know from from DV like Formula One and yeah. I think yeah. Formula E uh, with the electric yeah. cars. I know that's probably Formula Two and stuff like that. How this how does this all uh, line up? So it's streamed on ITV4. It's uh, it's part of the Toka package, which um, races alongside. The touring cars which is the biggest uh, series in the uk and i think about third or fourth in the world um last year for example there was 17 million tv viewers over the year and about 400,000 spectators at the events so it's pretty big you can definitely nice. get the brand out there. <laughs> really cool uh it's like really cool um and but you raced before so um let's get a little bit into that um mm -hmm. what did change till since you have Bitcoin now, did you notice anything different or uh, is it pretty much the same? <laughs> well, we definitely get a lot more attention. People, um, some people think, oh, it's great. Some people think, oh, it's a bit strange. But then some people ask and we, we, we explain why we're doing it. And um, we try and teach them as much as we can in a short amount of time. And sometimes people actually get into it because of us, which is great. And that's the whole purpose. We're, we're actually doing this because we, we want to spread the message. Um, to people that otherwise would not have seen it and that's why we chose motorsport to to do that oh nice nice uh, it, it's it's really cool to have uh uh bitcoin as a 
I, I, it, it's, it kind of has two different uh, aspects always to it. Like when I see companies doing it or small family businesses doing it or yeah, athletes doing it and, and all yeah. sorts of teams doing it. It has like the one as aspect that when you put it on the balance sheet, it obviously appreciates and you get it like in a low time ref mind, lo low time preference mindset. But yeah. the second aspect is, uh, is the whole marketing thing because mm -hmm. how many Bitcoin racing teams are out there? Like, are you the, probably the, one of the only ones? <laughs> there was one in the IndyCar championship for, I think they did it for a year or a few races, but yeah, they, that's where we got the idea from and we just made our own version of it pretty much. Yeah, I saw, I've seen that. Um, that was, I think this was a, a few years ago or one year ago or something like that. It was uh, in uh, all of my feed also. Uh, yeah. that, uh, that was, that was also cool. Um, mm. really, really cool. How did you personally, uh, get, get into Bitcoin then? It was my brother. Yeah. My, my brother, brother. And, um, he just got us all on it. Really. We, we all came, became pretty hooked on it rather quickly and, uh, we haven't looked back. Have a look back sorry <laughs> nice uh, um it's it's for me it's uh, orange pilling is always interesting because especially when someone i mean it depends on the relationship that you have with with, with your brother and with, with other family members uh but when in the family comes someone hey you you, you should go look into this and you're like ah okay yeah. uh, another such a thing how, how, how was how was that for you is did you did you dismiss it at first or like how did you warm up to the idea of bitcoin um, well, I'd known about it since 2016, but just had no idea how to get involved and how to buy any. So I, I didn't really make any effort to, to get it. But when he mentioned it, I thought, oh, I remember that. And um, he didn't it didn't take much persuading for any of our family, really, even our grandparents, which was a, a bit of a shock. They, um, they got on board rather quickly as well. But um, yeah, it didn't take a lot of work for him to persuade us because we we understand what Bitcoin's about and yeah, we, uh, we believe in it. Yeah. It, it's, it's fascinating for me how, how people then, uh, get into Bitcoin and how Bitcoin is kind of this, this tool for, uh, everyone and it has, but it has no CEO. It has no marketing team. It has nothing of the above and still people are doing so much for Bitcoin. Like you are racing with such a big logo. And there's no Bitcoin CEO that pays for, for you, basically. <laughs> there's like yeah. decentralized funding. There's all those uh, decentralized things. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's from an advertisement and marketing perspective. It's fascinating how, how this grows. I mean, I'm 100, like I'm a, in, if, if, a, if there would be a Bitcoin CEO in a, in a Bitcoin marketing team, I would probably be part of it because I'm full time in Bitcoin and doing the Bitcoin podcast and stuff like that. So I'm kind of in this decentralized <laughs> marketing team, but yeah. there's no one that says like, Oh, th this month we should get out this message or like we should concentrate more on the store of value side or let's, let's focus on that. Um, uh, uh, and this is a completely different from all the things that we are usually used to in the world. Like they're usually they're like hierarchies. There's, someone having a plan, there's someone uh, giving some guidelines out. And this is, by the way, also a good thing usually, because yeah. if, if there's a team and no one has to lead on, there's, there's no direction in that team usually. Um, but it's fascinating that it works with Bitcoin. How did you like, uh, how did, how do you see Bitcoin and this decentralized thing? Uh, for me also is fascinating that Satoshi Nakamoto could just leave the project after not even a really a year, like it, he pushed it out and was like, ah, I, I move on to other things. It is big enough now. Uh, yeah. and then still, it was this tiny thing. Uh, t tell us like, uh, how, how do you look at Bitcoin? Well, I think Bitcoin's the future. I think it's, it's accessible for everyone who has a phone pretty much. You, there's no intermediary. You don't need a bank to send any, any money or receive anything. It's very fast. Whereas sending money for a bank can take up to a few days or even a week. Um, I just think it's, it's what money should be. It's fair and no one can turn it off. No one can, you know, I just think, yeah, I just think it's a uh, sort of indestructible. Uh, <laughs> nice, nice. Right use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is definitely, it, it definitely is indestructible. Um, but you are on a, racetrack and in a challenge where you are the only Bitcoin team. 
So there are a lot of other layers involved. Do, do they notice Bitcoin in, in any special way or do they just look at that? Ah, you, you have a different sponsor. <laughs> yeah, well, I was actually quite shocked because the, the other teams, they don't really say anything or ask any questions, really. They just get on with it. They think, oh, that's different, but it is what it is. And they don't really come and ask. But some of the fans do. Some of the fans are interested and ask. Like Some people think, oh, are you sponsored by Bitcoin? And we say, no, we're just we're just doing it for the good of Bitcoin from our own pockets. Yeah, that, that, that's a weird conversation, right? Uh, because yeah. usually when you when you put something on your shirt, you're like, oh, yeah, they sponsor you. And they're like, mm. who's who's paying? Like, no, Bitcoin is not really paying us. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but but you attract uh, Bitcoin companies and, and, and with that, it's like uh, indirectly paid for from Bitcoin, even though Bitcoin has no payroll or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it's a weird uh, uh, thing, on, uh, re weird concept also of that. Um, yeah. One one thing is also interesting. Bitcoiners are usually really on the low time preference side. Like they always um, want to take the right steps. Uh, don't stress, but like take the right steps. Um, did this mindset in your team shift with Bitcoin or was it all always like a little bit in, in that direction where the, the mindset of, of, of Bitcoin was in this low time preference. Let's do the right steps in the right way. And, uh, let's, let's not do it for the next quarter. Let's do it for the next decade. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're in, we're in for the long run. Uh, we've been through two bear markets now, so we, we know what it feels like. Yeah, we've had some lows, but we know that the overall Bitcoin goal is just to hold on to it for as long as you can um we haven't sold anything we just kept on to it and i think that's the best way to do it just huddle really really nice do, do you have uh for for 2024 for for the for the racing uh um that is that challenge is it, can it f see it like it like as a tournament or uh it, it's like ending in 2024 so probably there's like a winner at, at some point yeah, so it's a championship. Um, there's two or three races each event, uh, usually one a month or two a month, and it runs from April through to uh, October. Um, so there's qualifying first. The person with the fastest lap qualifies first, obviously, and then so on and so forth. And then there's a point system. So first place gets the most points, second place, so on. And then at the end of the year, there'll be a champion, yeah. Nice. I love it. It's really cool to have um, Bitcoin and racing in, in, in kind of one thing uh, and yeah. have this, this, this all, 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 all shaking out in, in, yeah, in, in, in one nice, nice package in, in the end. Uh, what, what's your end goal? Is it, is it like um, growing the team and maybe coming to uh, better, uh, like higher challenges or like in other races or like what's, uh, where, where can you go with that Bitcoin racing team? Yeah, so we started off in the City Car Cup. I was driving a Citroen C1, and we always said C1 to F1, but I think F1 is probably a bit out of reach. <laughs> but now we're in the token package in the Mini Challenge. We want to do that for a year or two and then move up to the British Touring Cars, which is the biggest series in the UK, uh, and then go from there, really. We, we might move into the Porsche Super Cup, which follows the F1 races around as a support race. That would be pretty huge. Um, but yeah, we're definitely interested in growing the team and having more drivers and sort of maybe turning it into a business. And now is it is it already a business or, or are you all doing something on the side? or? Uh, I wouldn't really call it a business uh, at the moment. Um, we're just doing it because we love racing and we love Bitcoin and anything anything more that we, we get from it is a, is a plus and yeah, we'll, we'll go as high as we can with it to reach more viewers is the goal. So, so you do something next to it or is it still, is it already a full-time thing? I, I work, I work at Archax. They're one of my sponsors. So no, it's not a full-time. We're, we're not really making any money from it. We're just doing it for the love of it. Ah, what, what's Archax? What, what are Archex, they doing? Uh, FCA regulated digital securities exchange in London. Uh, they're also a custodian and a brokerage as well. I work there on the operations team, so it's pretty cool that they uh, 
they sponsored me. Nice. Uh, I mean, if, 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 if they employ you, they, they can also sponsor you, right? <laughs> they, yeah. they should do that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, they didn't take too much persuading either, so it's pretty good. So I hope they have that throughout, throughout my racing career. As long All as I right. stay. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I can imagine actually like, uh, when you are in that challenge, I can imagine there's like a car that you have to pay for or maybe yeah. even several cars. We, we bought the car, so we, we own the car. Um, when we want to get rid of it, we should be able to get the same sort of money back for it, which is good. Um, but yeah, you, you buy the car, you, you can rent from other teams, but it's just more expensive. Mm. And there, then there's like probably a fee to get in, into the challenge. Yes, to enter the championship is quite a lot. Um, it's about fifteen thousand for oh, the year okay. to enter the races, and then you've got things like tires and maintenance, changing parts. It uh, all adds up quite quick. It's uh, not a cheap sport, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, it's it's a high entry barrier. I I, I guess yeah. it's like. Starting swimming is easier. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you can't it's... Do practice whenever you want because um, there's rules and regulations on that, and it's uh, expensive even to practice. So you got you can't just go and play football, for example. You have to go out and get the car, drag the car, get the fuel. Yeah, it's uh, it's not cheap. Oh yes, because when you uh, training for it, you also have to, you cannot train on the normal streets. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they could be very expensive, but you, you have to like you know, on a track and they also have to pay probably some fees to get going. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, that's, uh, I mean, I, I love that sports and I, from time to time, I r drive in go-karts uh, in, in yeah, small, yeah. Uh, it's probably not not even a little bit relatable um, but no, it's, yeah, it's, it's because racing drivers start off in go-karting that's where you learn the basics and then you go from karting to cars how, how different is it but uh, it's like uh, when I, when... you have a lot of transferable skills but it is it's very different there's a there's more at stake there's more risk and yeah but you do learn a lot from karting and the best drivers in the world most of them started go-karting when they were probably six or seven years old, maybe even younger. For me, a fascinating is when, when people talk about Formula One and, and, and racing as a sport, they are like, ah, it's not a sport because you just sit in a car. But everyone that was for like just 20 minutes in a go-kart and raced uh, uh, knows that it's like you, you are getting out and you're sweating a lot. Like it's, okay. it's, 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 it's really heavy and, and your arms yeah. and everything. And in, with the small go-karts, probably it's easier with like bigger cars and longer durations and stuff like that. Um, yeah. How, how do you train for that? Uh, well, I don't really train for it directly. I, I do go to the gym a lot, so that definitely helps. Um, I don't think you really need to train as such for the championship I am in, but saying that after a session, my neck really does ache uh, from the G forces. I know it's not as much as F1, but, your neck's moving around a lot. You have to keep your neck upright, really. And, um, yeah, so it does hurt. So maybe I should start training my neck in the gym. I just think that would look a bit weird. <laughs> but yeah, the stronger you are, the, 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 more man the more manageable it is. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's a different sort of training that you, you do for racing. Um, I just do weights, really. Yeah, it's it's... Uh, I also see that the, I mean, Formula One is, uh, is probably a different thing, but, uh, they also have like late weight limits and stuff like that. So they, they have to be also on the, in the weighing machine and, and see that mm. they are having not, 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 uh, not, not enough. So not, uh, yeah, they should yeah. have enough. Like there has a limit they, they have to go over, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got weight limits in our, in our championship. Um, there's a minimum weight for the car. So when the car comes in from qualifying or a race, if it's over that, you, if it's under that, sorry, you'll, uh, you'll be disqualified. Oh, and yeah. it's also with, also with you. Yeah. 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 They're very strict on it. So if you're if, <laughs> not enough, then you're out. Yeah. So even if I was one kilo under the minimum, I'll be disqualified. Ah. On the race. 
If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self-custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a Bitbox. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in all of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. And, and, and you probably weigh yourself then. <laughs> More uh, well, it's, it's the weight of the driver and the car together. So you drive it onto a weigh bridge. Um, um, you're underweight. We have a box where you can put heavy metal in to, to get you to weight. Or more fuel. Oh, so uh, it's it's okay for, for you to be um, not as heavy, but then you have to compensate uh, with... It, it's it's about the total... Uh, it makes sense uh, because yeah. by what... Why, why, why should you be punished just because you don't have enough uh, weight? Yeah, but I do see the, the F1 drivers, they weigh the car with them in it and then they step out and step on a on a scale to weigh themselves with their helmet on. So I don't know how it works there, but maybe there's two separate ways. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I always see those Formula One uh, um racers uh outside stepping with with uh the with that yeah, uh yeah. weighing thing and and then like makes so much more sense to just like uh do mm -hmm. uh do the thing uh on the on yeah. the racing track yeah but uh we kind of drifted off the the, the bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> topic um i i usually ask uh, my guests um uh, what they think about bitcoin and especially with the fiat currencies uh, it would be interesting to know what what you think of of uh, um, uh, fiat currencies, US dollars, euro. Where where are you from? Uh, what, what what fiat currencies do you have to live with? Uh, GBP. Uh, yeah, G pounds. Oh, okay. So yeah. Uh, 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 how how high is the inflation there? Uh, not not as not as uh, crazy in Venezuela, but also pretty high. It's pretty bad at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting very expensive, even for basic things now. Um, I'd quite like to to move away, to be honest. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't I don't like fiat currencies. They're printed out of thin air, um, and that's what makes Bitcoin so good, is because there'll only ever be twenty one million of them. So it's uh it's very scarce. And yeah, if if you're watching this and you don't have Bitcoin, you probably should think about it. Do your research. <laughs> <first. laughs> yeah, one one hundred percent. This is. Um, which is also, uh, f f for me, fascinating to see that we, we Bitcoiners are like that, always that passionate about, uh, and, and we, we kind of cannot stop our people. I tried it. Yeah. I'm yeah. way more defensive now because of the podcast. And I see that every one of my friends and families get to know about Bitcoin because of my social media things. Uh, yeah. so I'm a little bit more chilled now. Uh, but mm -hmm. even if, even if, 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 yeah, uh, I, I, I still try to, to bring it up in, 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 in conversations. But do you imagine that uh, fiat currencies will always be here? I'm fascinating that they're still living uh, and there is a really long history of inflation. Uh, uh, but do, do you think that we could come to a Bitcoin standard? I really do hope so. Uh, but I think it's going to take 
a fairly long time um, and a lot of work because uh, the governments are all, um, what's the word? They've been around for so long and fiat currency has become so normal that most people don't even question it and don't even question the fact that money is just printed out of thin air. Um, but yeah, I really hope that the Bitcoin standard does become a thing because it's just more fair and yeah, it's easily accessible for people. Uh, yeah, some people can't even get a bank account. So yeah, I, I don't like fiat. <laughs> Why, why do you think why, why do you think people don't um, question it? I, I'm baffled by that. And so many people, like even Michael Saylor talks about that, that he did not question what is money till uh, he got to know about Bitcoin. And he was a yeah. CEO of a publicly traded company. Like he was really into the finance scene. <laughs> like he, he he saw a lot yeah. in the world. Uh, but still he did not question like, what is actually money? Like, wh why do you think people <laughs> seemingly don't care? Yeah, well, I think that's the thing. People don't actually really understand what money is. And a lot of the time they won't take the time to, to try and learn. So yeah, people that don't learn about money probably won't really care to learn about Bitcoin. Um, I think you have to understand what money is so that you can appreciate the good that Bitcoin does. Um, but I think it's just a, a, probably a lack of of education. It's something that you're not taught in school, which is just totally strange. You don't learn things that actually help you in life, like paying taxes and and learning about money. Um, so I think that's probably a big factor to it. Um, but more so, just the fact that people don't take the time to to study and and get an understanding about it. Yeah. I'm guilty of that. I didn't really know what money was for a long time, um, but when I discovered Bitcoin, it it made me want to to get an understanding of how it actually works. Uh, uh, it's it's fa the for me uh, when when we look at Bitcoin uh, and when we look at the world where Bitcoin is not there, and I'm mm -hmm. like what should I do for a pension? What should I do for, for savings? What should I do for long-term and medium-term savings? Mm -hmm. And for me, the only answer is right now, Bitcoin. I don't know. Do you, do you also use Bitcoin as your pension? Do you have a yeah, different yeah. pension plan also? I'm pretty much all in with Bitcoin. <laughs> I think it's the best investment ever. Um, it's certainly one of the most scarce, if not the most scarce. Um, I don't really... I'm not really interested in any, any other assets, to be honest. Uh, same as my brother. Yeah, it, it, it's fascinating for me that uh, we 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 found that one store of value, and uh, it's it, it's also interesting that we are living through two major revolutions. The first is like the the internet revolution, where everything is digitalizing, everything is uh, in on a global scale all of the sudden. And then on the second side, we have the Bitcoin revolution, the sound money revolution, where we all of a sudden have better money, uh, yeah. uh, which, uh, I find, uh, amazing to, to have. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's really cool. Uh, it's, I like it a lot. Is, is there anything that, uh, you are passionate about, uh, besides, uh, yeah, Bitcoin and, and, and racing? Um, Bitcoin racing, going to the gym. I like traveling. I went to Southeast Asia last year, which was cool. Um, but other than that, no, not, not really. Just uh, racing and Bitcoin pretty much. <laughs> I like it. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, for, for, for me, for me, it's, it's kind of gets more, more and more into this, this Bitcoin thing. And e even, uh, e even, uh, the small things I do outside of Bitcoin are kind of related to Bitcoin. For example, I fought, like yesterday, the whole day I was setting up the new studio, uh, mm -hmm. and, and this all has nothing to do with Bitcoin, but I'm doing it for Bitcoin. So like even yeah. stuff that is not related directly to Bitcoin is kind of uh, into Bitcoin, but I, I learned about lightings and, and yeah. background things yeah. and, and, and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot of work <laughs> to, yeah. get, to get it acceptable. Uh, unfortunately I don't have like in my last studio, I had like a nice background, 
but mm -hmm. right now I don't I only have a white uh white wall uh yeah. and uh this is my my only option and this yeah I I, I like it a lot yeah, um, yeah th thank you thank you I'm I'm, I'm trying my best <laughs> to get something right <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Then, uh, is is there anything uh, uh, else uh, as topic? Otherwise, we will we will go to the to the end routine. Uh, have you been to El Salvador? Oh uh, no, but I have to. But like, are you in uh, in El Salvador? Or? Uh, I have been. I went in twenty twenty two with my family. Uh, it was yeah, really good. Nice weather, nice food, nice people, and Bitcoin's legal tender, so perfect. It's a very nice, uh, very nice country. I think um, President Bukele is doing a great job. You have seen uh, on on your car is the El Salvador flag, right? Uh, yeah, above agree. it. How, so, how did this come to to, uh, to be? Yeah, that was actually my mum's idea. She she thought we should put the flag on the car, and then um, we got in contact with the UK ambassador to El Salvador, and we went to their office and had a chat with them um, to ask for permission. So she, she she phoned the presidential office in El Salvador and eventually we got permission to do it, which is really cool. So we're sort of partners in a sense, I guess, um, trying to spread the message of Bitcoin and El Salvador simultaneously. Uh, you cannot just put a flag uh, on a car. You have to ask for permission. Yeah, well, we, we thought that, but we thought um, best to ask. Uh, but they, they were very happy about it. They were really pleased that we wanted to to promote their country in a sense yeah i but mean uh, on the top <laughs> ah nice 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 uh, have you been uh, you, you have been to, to el salvador how was your um journey there uh it was quite a long one it's eight hours to canada and then i think about four or five hours to el salvador from canada but i really enjoyed it the the weather was very nice friendly people and yeah it's just a, a whole different country to what it used to be so it is like i had already uh, i don't know 12 people or something like that uh from uh el salvador or people that went to el salvador uh so like they're living now there um yeah, yeah. on on my show and i talked with them so much about el salvador and, and what the mission is and it's kind of like everyone agrees it's like a startup country uh the bodyguards and the security guards uh, in front of the uh, shops and stores are getting less. Uh, you can get out of uh, of the house uh, without <laughs> yeah. being in yeah. danger immediately. Uh, yeah. And then also the monetary aspect, you can pay with Bitcoin. Not uh, How was your experience? With, did, did you pay stuff with Bitcoin? I heard it's, it's yeah. still not really widespread, but it's like uh, quite good. Yeah, it's quite good. Um, a lot of restaurants accept it. Um, a few places still don't, but I think uh, with more time they'll start to. Um, but on a whole, it's pretty pretty well adopted, I think, from what I saw. I love it. Yeah, Bitcoin country. How, how does this? How do you think uh, this this whole thing plays out with uh, with all the countries? Because game theory, like when when you're familiar with game theory of of country uh, level, it's like when one country starts to really aggressively adopt it, it's just a matter mm -hmm. of time until someone else is also like, ah, oh, let's 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 try it. Let's let's see how this works. And then there's another country, another country, and the first countries obviously are the, the more smaller ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually, a big one could could fall and say like, ah, oh, let's 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 make Bitcoin something. How do you see the 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 uh, um, game theory uh, uh, playing out? Well, I, I hope more countries adopt it. I think there's no denying that it's worked well for El Salvador. Um, I think Argentina, did Argentina think, adopt it? I don't know. I, I don't Argentina know. Is, is, is interesting because uh, Javier Millet, the president, gets kind yeah. of celebrated for being a Bitcoin president, but yeah. he's not really a Bitcoiner. Uh, but he is a really big um, proponent of Austrian economics. Yeah. and letting the free market decide so yeah. he just wants to destroy the central bank of argentina and let yeah. all currencies us dollar other uh, uh, cryptocurrencies bitcoin freely uh, spread throughout the country 
and let the market decide who the winner is. This is yeah. what I got from Javier Millet. Um, even though I'm, I was never in Argentina, I did not listen to like 20, 30, 50 hours of his interviews. I just listened to a little bit of it. Uh, yeah. But that's kind of the vibe that I get from him. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. I, I hope more countries do it because it's definitely worked for El Salvador. Yeah, why not explore uh, new options? And I am a big believer in every country. No, um, I, I'm a big believer that Bitcoin in a free market will always win. Like if you yep. compare anything with Bitcoin in a free market, Bitcoin, Bitcoin will be so by far the winner that it will be so obvious that other countries don't even start with the free market then they just start with Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, so that yeah. uh, will be really interesting how this all shakes mm -hmm. out and plays out. Uh, it's uh, for me in Austria, pe people don't really realize it. It's, it's also in America in the elections. Uh, it's already a topic here less uh, in the European Union, if in the elections is it's not a topic. Did you hear, hear it? Heard it from politicians uh, uh, from you that they like talked about Bitcoin, or is it also a non-topic? I think generally Bitcoin in in the media is looked at quite negatively, um, especially looking at El Salvador. When when we went through the bear market, a lot of media from america towards el salvador was very negative and saying oh he's uh he's messed up here etc um but you now now that they're up on their investment you, there's no news from america they're not mentioning it uh, which i think is unfair but it just it just shows what what the media are about they're, they're focusing mainly on the negative stuff um but in the uk i i don't really i don't really know how Bitcoin is perceived from politicians. Uh, I think the stuff I have seen is usually negative. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to change within the co coming years. Um, you guys are not no longer in the European Union, um, no. which is also interesting because this debate is now a little bit coming up in the, because I think next week on Sunday. Uh, so when this comes out, it's kind of around the time when the elections are uh, in the European Union, also in Austria. Um, what, what do you think? I mean, this has nothing to do with Bitcoin, but do you think it's a good idea that uh, they, they, they went out of the uh, European Union and or, or are you like, uh, you want back in? What's your personal thing? To be honest with you, uh, I don't really have much of an opinion on it. I, I don't really, I don't really know enough about politics and I haven't really taking the time to look into it because it sort of will make no difference to me um what happens uh, yeah what happens happens i guess um but yeah i haven't really taken too much of an interest in it um i just uh yeah just i don't know <laughs> i don't really yeah I don't really know. Yeah, cha, 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 just, just Bitcoin. I, I love that approach. I was yeah. really involved in politics, and that's why it comes up a little bit more. Because, yeah. but since uh, two and a half years, something like that, uh, I'm not really involved in any politicians' uh, things. Uh, yeah. I still vote. As this, this vote was the one, one vote where I'm like, does it really make sense to vote? Like, does it matter? <laughs> but I still yeah, vote. Exactly. But yeah, but it, that's also something that when you say uh, did, you did not notice uh, a big difference, uh, this also says a lot about uh, uh, the Brexit. And it will, will be interesting how, how this goes. I feel like the European Union does not really understand Bitcoin and it's, it, yeah. it bothers me. And it, uh, it's, it's, it's so sad to see that uh, we could go because we lost the internet, we, we could at least go uh, when uh, uh, go on the horse a little bit earlier on on the Bitcoin cycle, but America is a little bit further ahead, and El Salvador and other countries are even further ahead. Yeah, yeah. Then perfect. Then uh, uh, then let's come to our, our end routine, uh, where uh, the previous guest is asking something uh, for the next guest, and the question from the previous guest for you uh, is: What does Bitcoin mindset? mean to you it's a great question bitcoin mindset for, for me personally it's just uh 
I'm I'm kind of treating it as as my pension, like like you said earlier. Uh, I think as long as I have Bitcoin, I'm happy. Uh, I'm going to stack as much as I can for as long as I can. And yeah, I think with Bitcoin, the future's bright. Really cool. Where can people um, find more out about you and about Bitcoin racing? Where can people ask you questions? Yeah, you can find us on Twitter at Bitcoin Racing. We have a website as well. Uh, if you want to have any discussions, you're more than welcome to send us a message. We'll be happy to hear from you. And yeah. Perfect. Then uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris, for, for being on. And uh, for, for everyone uh, watching, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.